this one when it's inflating the building because it's pushing up against that, it's pushing out the walls. All right. So far, so good? So far, so good. All right. When you are calculate, when you are doing that, so say in your top right of your portal frames that you've done there, there, do you do both? Like, if you're calculating forces, do you do a pressure, an internal pressure, inflating uh, when you're working at sidewall forces and... Yes, uh, so added to that is an internal wind pressure. Yeah. Yes, and you have to put all those into the load case like that. And, and, and do you take both things in the one case, if you know what I mean, and say the roofs is, is a theoretical internal okay. pressure? Okay, one of your load cases is that maximum uplift, that maximum pulling out force, and a maximum inflation. Okay. Yeah. And that is likely to be one of your limiting load cases. By the time you come down here with inflation, it's much less serious. Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is you throw that load case away because you know you can see it's going to be less severe than that. Yeah. All right. If your building is very short, you never have to consider those down there. You only have to consider that one. Okay. When the wind blows this way, that whole thing gets reversed. So again, if you're analyzing stuff down here for these tiny little uplifts, why are you bothering? Because you know you've got a severe uplift coming and the wind blows the other way. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, of course, that might be a different wind speed to the one coming this way. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go through a few other factors. Um, you've got a portal frame here, and you've got another portal frame here, and another portal frame here. And let's say they're 10 meters apart. And let's say the span of that is, I don't know, it's called 20 meters. That portal frame carries 10 times the height, which is, I don't know, five. So that's 50 square meters, 100 square meters, plus about 2,200, it carries about 300 square meters on that portal frame. When I go down table 5.4, it's called tributary area. If the portal frame carries more than 100 square meters, you get to reduce all these wind loads by 0.8. And what that's about is when the wind blows, it blows hard in the little pocket here, and it not, it's not blowing hard at the same time with the other thing. So it's saying that by the time that averages out, the real peak wind load is not really going to affect one whole massive truss at the same time. Okay? Then there is also, uh, that was table 5.4. Also over the page is table 5.5 which says if you're considering actions on three surfaces or four surfaces, then you can also reduce that by 0.8. Okay. Um, if you're considering only the roof, two sides of the roof, but not the walls, then you can reduce it by 0.9, or multiply it by 0.9. Okay. Yeah, there is a trap. Here we go, just above that page right there. It says, for any roofs and side walls, the product Ka and Kc shall not be less than 0.8. So those two factors that I talked about, the area and the four surfaces, each of them is 0.8. If you multiply them together, you have 0.64 and you're not allowed to use it. So you use generally one or the other. But there's the 0.8. So far, so good? Okay. So you can see by multiplying out all these different, we got, we're already into dozens of load, fact, load cases already. And so it's not that when I design a shed, I always have end up with dozens of load cases. It's that I look at all these and go, I'm going to ignore that one and that one because I know they're less severe than that one. So it's a matter of selectively throwing them away. All right. Now we talk about local pressures. Okay, local pressures are only external wind, they're not internal, all right? But the local pressure says that on a very small area here, you might have a bit of force from the wind which is greater than what we've talked about so far, okay? The local pressure factor only applies to the cladding and to the first thing it's attached to. So that's normally, it comes into purlin design. If you've got purlins, so if this is a portal frame, 
like this, and you've got these little Z-shaped purlins here, and you've got the roof on there, and purlins down here, and the cladding on there. We're talking now only about analysis of those Z-shaped purlins and the cladding. We're not talking about the portal frame anymore. Okay? So local factors do not apply to the main structure. They only apply to the local areas. And so there's a lovely set of diagrams on there and there. And what that says is basically in the corner of the building, you can have up to three times the pressure on that. And so where that comes out is, um, let's go back over to here. Uh, on this plan here, you imagine we've got the portal frames going across here like this. And we've got a local pressure factor, which could be anywhere basically on the edges or on the ridges. So here, at one stage, there might be a local pressure area, which is two, one and a half, two or even three times the force of the rest of it. And what that means is basically the end of the building gets hammered. So that's why you normally see in a, often see in, sorry, in a shed like this, on the edges they'll have purlins, they'll put an extra purlin in the middle um, to take the extra load. <coughs> Sometimes in the last span, if you've got purlins going across like that, in the last span there'll be double purlins, they'll be twice as, twice as many in the end spans. And that's all about picking up those local factors. Right. Do you want me to talk more about that or is that enough for now? Okay. Any four questions? <coughs> I guess, so what, what you're saying is when you're modeling something, you will just find the worst cases and apply it to, uh, we're talking about portal frames here, so let's go with portal frames. So you just yes. apply it to one portal frame and check that it passes both of those mode All right, cases. so if I'm in something like space gas? Yeah. All right, yeah, let's, let's go into that. Okay. So space gas and other structural analysis programs lets you put in a whole lot of loads and then lets you apply loads as load cases. So in, in the programs you model the structure. So let's, let's call it a two-dimensional structure. You model it like that. The model doesn't change. That's the model. That's, that's what you're physically going to build. Yep. Okay. Now to that we apply all these possible loads on it. So we have load cases and then load combinations. Mm -hmm. And load, I can have as many load cases as I want and as much or as little as I want in it. So what I might do is say a load case is the upwind load on the wall. Okay? Let's call it load case 10. Um, actually, let's backtrack a bit. Normally I call load case 1 is the self-weighted structure. Load case 2 is the live load. Load case 3 is the snow load. And all those sort of other loads yeah. that come into 1 to 10. Then I start at 20. This is just my the way I set it up. 20 onwards is the strength load cases. So we're going to talk about the wind this way, wind that way, all that kind of stuff. Then 40 onwards is deflection cases. So they're often the strength just reduced by a factor. Um, when you take... The wind's an ultimate load. It's not a deflection load. So when you talk about the deflection of the building, you can take a lesser wind load, which is normally about between 65 and 75 percent of the strength. Okay. All right. So that's load case. Let's call that load case one. Let's call it load case ten. All right. I'm going to put a lee force on here. <coughs> now those, depending on the configuration of the building, always come together. I'm never going to separate that. So I'm going to put stick that into load case ten as well. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, when the wind's blowing this way, I'm going to have a load like that, and let's call that 11. And going along with that, I've got the wind upwards there, let's call it 12, okay. Um, I'm going to have an internal pressure, 13, and I've got an internal pressure going the other way. Let's call that 14. 13. 14. Okay. All right. Um, 
and depending how flat this roof is, I might have a downforce off that wind here. Yeah. Let's call that 15. All right. That's the wind going that way. Now, if I think about the wind going this way, then I have, I'll change colors so we can, don't get too messed up. <coughs> What are we up to? 16. And an uplift there. That's also 16. I know that, sorry, that's 17. But before I finish with 16, I know there was a force off the leeward wall that always occurs with that one. So let's call that 16 as well. Okay. Um, and there was this load here, which is an uplift, 12. Uh, that's going to be 13, and there's the possible downforce, 14. Okay? Uh, when the wind blows in, I'm going to have an uplift on the roof, which is the quite severe one. It's actually the same as that red line, but uh, what are we up to? 15, 16, 17? That's 17 because it happens on both sides. There's also going to be a pulling off the wall, 17, and a pulling off the wall, 17. That's the side load. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, now, the side, you know how it varies down the building? Yep. So we could go 17, 18, 19 for the three different ones. But I'm going to take a shortcut and just go, we're only going to design it for, yep. for the worst case. Uh, if it's a long building, you know that these ones never get hit by the worst case. So if I do that, I'm possibly over-designing those ones. But let's say our building is not that big and we want all the portal frames to be the same size, which is kind of normal. So we're gonna take the worst ones. Okay. Up to 17, what else have we got? The wind blowing that way is gonna be exactly the same as the wind blowing that way if my building's symmetrical. Yep. Uh, but this is like one typical portal frame we're talking about here. Okay, there are the load cases. Now we talk about the load combinations. So, the load combinations are, um, I'm going to write it all up on here. So, you imagine with that.